Hey guys, thanks for checking the video out. If you're anything like me, then you've got somewhere in the region of a million compressor plugins from all different manufacturers, all different kinds. You've got 1176s, you've got SSL bus compressors, free ones, paid ones, the lot. I never really fully take the time to appreciate what they can all do. And for that reason, I've, I've really slimmed down on what I have. I've deactivated a load of compressors I don't use, but the ones that I do use, I use to their strengths. And I know that this particular compressor is good on vocals. This one's good on drums. I try and have a purpose for each compressor. Now, when I got the Slate Digital All Access Pass, I saw all the compressors that were in there and I was a bit, you know, there's a lot of them. And they keep adding more and they keep having different flavors and different emulations of different stuff. And it can be overwhelming. So what I really wanted to do is take a step back, take a look at all these compressors, what are they good for? What does this one work for? How does this one sound? How are they all compare? And what are the different tonalities of each of them? Now, a few caveats here. It's impossible for me to do a video which is gonna show every single compressor on every single instrument. So I'm not doing that. I'm doing them all on a percussion loop, which is kind of a really good way of demonstrating exactly what it's gonna to do to some transient material. What I've also done, or I should say what I've not done, is matched every single setting of every single compressor. I've got three kids. I've not got time to do that. It's just, that's such a massive task. There's 14 compressors here. To go through that would be crazy. What I have done though, is done two examples of each. So we've got one that's getting like three or four decibels of gain reduction, and we've got one of each compressor there of the 14 that they have. And then one that's getting around nine or 10 dB of gain reduction. So we've got like a smooth version and a squashy version. And I just wanted to see what the real differences are between them. There are a lot of differences, but I wanted to make this as real world as possible. And to go along with that, not matching all the settings, I've left these kind of on the stock version. So when you load up the plugin, what's the attack and release on when you just load it up straight away? Well, that's what I've left it on. I've gone for everything on a four to one ratio where possible. We'll look at that later. So everything is kind of as matched as I can possibly get it without going a little bit crazy. So I want to play you now what each of these compressors sound like. And the first ones you're going to hear are three or four decibels of gain reduction. That's going through all the compressors that Slate Digital has. This is January 2023. So they may have added some more by the time you get to see this. And then nine to 10 dB of gain reduction. Now, if you're just interested in the chat and having a look into these in a bit more depth, then you can skip the next two minutes and 15 seconds or something. But if not, sit back, grab some popcorn and take a listen to these 14 different compressors in two different configurations.
Okay, so lots to take in there. One that really surprised me is the one that I don't ever use on anything, and that's the, the U73B. I've never really understood it. I've never really used it for much. It got kind of tagged on. It was never an emulation of anything I was really that aware of, but the bottom end in that is really cool. I like it a lot. Let's just check that out. So here it is just on the um, the slightly gentler, like three to four dB one. Loads of bottom end there. Compare that to like FG2A. That FG2A is like so much tighter, but the U73B, there's something interesting going on here. So if we just take a listen to it, we've got this uh, high pass filter. So typically when you put the high pass filter in, you'll not be compressing the low end or thereabouts anyway. Um, but let's listen to what happens when I bring in this, this, this high pass filter. Without it. it just kind of kills all the bottom end, which to me seems backwards. If I haven't got it in, then it's going to be compressing the low end. But if I have got it in, it's not compressing the low end. So that seems kind of backward to me. But this is a cool sounding compressor. This is real kind of, it's got a sort of a crunchy vibe to it. So it's kind of a little bit smashier than like the monster even is. The monster is meant to be like the real kind of smashy one. Um, something interesting on that one though, I had to kind of deal with the gain a little bit. I had to put a little bit less into it because I couldn't get it to do like three or four dB of reduction. It was just doing loads more as it was. So I had to kind of tame that a bit. But one of the ones that really occurred to me as well as that U73 was FG Dynamic and just how, how punchy it was. Let's have a look at that one now. So punchy, as opposed to that um, U73, kind of killing it a bit more. It's real, got that kind of knock sound to it. Now, I know that this is because of the, the release time and the attack time, which I've kind of discussed that, but we have the attack time that we can change between slow, I guess, and fast. We've just got a fast button that we can press in. So let's try that on fast attack now and just have a listen to the difference. Destroying it. Open. That's absolutely annihilating it, isn't it? So this compressor, I wouldn't necessarily call it versatile because it's either super smashy or not super smashy, but what it does on the slow attack is really so punchy. Let's take a listen to the nine or 10 dB version as well. So here it is. It's still so punchy without it. Bring it in. It's just letting that kick and snare really punch through. It's such a, a punchy compressor, a knocky compressor. This one for drums is, is just fantastic. Now, one of the interesting comparisons here is the 31176s. We've got the uh, the classic, I suppose you'd call it, the, the black face, and then we've got the, uh, the modern, and then we've got the vintage as well. So the vintage is that blue face, and then the modern uh, is a bit more of a modern take on it. The attack and release times are slightly different. Let's take a listen to those three now and just see what the differences really are in this context. Okay, that's kind of the sound you'd expect from that. Let's go to the blue. A little more open. What about the vintage? Very similar to the modern. Back to the modern. The modern's maybe got a little more low end. What I'm not doing here is, maybe what I should have done, is study the manuals. So I'm not going to be just regurgitating what I've read in the manuals and saying, oh, this sounds like it's got loads more, uh, a faster attack. And in the manual, it says that as well. I've basically forgotten everything that it says in the manuals from when I read them absolutely ages ago. And I read a few of them, not all of them. So I'm just going on what it sounds like. I'm not going on very particular kind of attack constants, release constants, and we're not going on exact times here. You'll see in something like, um, I don't know, like the uh, FGX2, for example, which is a cool compressor. It's kind of vanilla in the sense that it's not like adding too much into the sound. But if you look at the attack and release, so the attack is at five, 
whatever that means. And it goes from zero to 10. Now that's not in milliseconds. I hope it's not milliseconds. So I don't know what that is. Some of them are in milliseconds. Some of them are not. Some of them have this kind of arbitrary scale. So we're just listening to what it actually sounds like. We're not bothering with what it says in the manual. We're just bothering with what our ears are hearing. And really, th that's that's the telling thing, isn't it? So one of the really interesting, relatively new kind of plugins uh, is this custom opto. And we've got a few different variations on here. We've got flat, smooth, warm, aggro, and airy. Now, I could have done a different take for each of them. I, I didn't, just sue me, whatever. But I think that the smooth is not quite what it says. Agro puts it in kind of the same league as one of the other compressors. Let, let's just take a listen to them and see what the difference really is. Um, I'm actually not going to go on this 3 to 4 dB because that's not going to be a good test at all. Let's go on the super aggressive, let's go like 9 to 10 dB of gain reduction and just see what the difference is between these, these different settings. So starting on flat, we'll go smooth, warm, aggro and airy. Let's check it out. Grabby. That sounds grabbier to me. Flat again. Kind of puts it in a similar league to the FG Dynamics. It's it's punchier. It's grabbier, but it's punchier, which in my kind of vocabulary is the opposite, but it, it's sort of doing the same thing. I, I don't know, whatever. Let's go to warm. A bit more open. Aggro, this is the interesting one. Totally different. Go back to flat. Kind of knocky. Really punchy. And then airy. So I don't even know which one of these is the same or meant to be the same as the FG2A. Um, I would assume it's probably the flat. I don't know, so don't quote me on that. Um, but to me, the aggro just sounds so punchy. I love that. Let's listen to it compared to the FG2A. A little less bottom end on the FG2A. Bit more on the lows there. Let's try on smooth. Oh no, let, I'll tell you what, let's try on flat and then let's compare that to the FG2A. Similar, I feel like I'm maybe giving the FG2A a little bit too much level. Custom. Custom's a little bit squashier, isn't it? One other thing I found when comparing all these is that the input and output levels is vastly different. If you look at my mixer, I've had to put like loads of game plugins on the way in, on the way out, just to try and get them like vaguely the same. It was quite a task. But to me, that Custom Opto and the FG2A, I can't get them to sound exactly the same, um, but the Custom Opto, there's just so much there. Like in that aggro setting, let's open it up again. That aggro setting had a decent amount of low end to it. Let's take a listen to that compared to the uh, U73B, because to me it sounded kind of in that vein, but also in the same vein as the FG Dynamics. So we'll listen to all of them. So here's the uh, aggro setting on Custom. Let's go for U73B. Definitely similarities there. FG Dynamics. Oh, it's nothing like it. That's so tight. That's such a tight compressor. That's amazing. Um, I'm hesitant to start messing around with the release control because then it's not like a control ver version. Do you know what I mean? It's not like the same as it was straight out of the gate, which is kind of the whole point of me doing this. Um, I've not got the gate or anything on though. Um, Wow, that's cool. So FG Dynamics, whether you give it three to four dB of gain reduction or nine to 10, super punchy. Um, that custom opto is an interesting one because it's got a few different sounds in it. And I'd say that you can get like, out of these five settings, you can probably get a similar sound to a lot of the different compressors in the Slate Digital bundle, um, albeit in kind of an opto sort of way, not a very, very fast way. Um, so let's take a listen to the Let's go for the FG401 because this is like the 
uh, the utility one, isn't it? And again, it's got two different circuits on it, transformers. I've just gone for whatever it comes with out, out the gate, you know. Um, let's take a listen to this compared to the FG2A because it's meant to be a relatively similar thing, I think. FG2A. Yeah, that's pretty similar. It's maybe allowing a bit, a bit much through. Okay, back to the custom opto, and let's put that on the uh, the flat setting. Take a listen to that against the FG four hundred one. Four hundred one coming up. I think I've maybe just given it a little bit too much on the level. Back to custom opto. Seems like that FG two hundred one. It's kind of a bit slower even than the opto compressors on this setting, and that's not even at the slowest setting. Wow. Okay. I like the FG four hundred one. It's cool. It's got a, a a kind of warmth to it. I hate that word. It's got like a, a smoothness to it. It's not a warmth. It's a smoothness. Um, but let's compare this to the Distressor because the Distressor is another kind of Swiss Army knife compressor. And one thing that I noted is that no matter what setting I put the Distressor on, or FG Stress on, sorry. It kind of just sounds great. Like I can't make it sound really that bad. So here it is on loads of dB. Oh, it just sounds awesome. Let's compare this to FG Grey. Oh, wow. That's really similar. No, it's not. <laughs> Okay, FG Grey is actually clamping down just a little bit more than that FG Stress. Uh, FG Stress was very punchy and cool sounding. I keep going back to this FG Dynamics because it's such a punchy. It's kind of the benchmark for punchy compressors for me in this slight digital bundle anyway. Let's take a listen to the Stress versus Dynamics. Punch, punch. Oh. Okay, I think we might have a new winner in the punchiest compressor. FG Stress, it's it's a little looser. The Dynamics is a little tighter in that it's kind of killing that bottom end just a touch, and it feels like the release is a little bit um, slower. It feels like the FG Stress is allowing that bottom end to kind of be squashed up for a bit longer. Um, that's interesting. Okay, the one kind of wild card in, in all of this um, other than the FGX2, which we'll, we'll take a look at in a moment, um, is FGMU. Now, I love this compressor. I've done it on like snares, I've done it on vocals, done it on full mixes, the, the whole lot. But it's got a real presence to it. The, the mid-range, the high mid, it really kind of ramps things up a little bit there. If we just take a listen to the one that's not compressing too much, just like the 3 or 4 dB one, uh, and we're going to take it in and out, as well as the compression, just take a listen to that kind of mid-range, the tonality. It's brightening things quite considerably. So this is with it engaged. I'll take it out. A bit duller. Bring it back in. On those hi-hats and snare, take it out. Bring it in one more time. But it's a great sound. It's um, it's quite open. Now I'm not going to pretend to know what the original time constants are on like that Fairchild because they've got like, that weird one, two, three, four, five selector. I don't know. But they kind of made it a little bit easier for us here by giving us attack and release. But again, these are kind of arbitrary. Two point five. What what does that mean? I don't know. It's just midway, basically, isn't it? So again, I'm not. I'm not comparing apples to apples. I'm not giving like the exact same attack and release constants. I'm not making them exactly the same. We're talking about how these compressors sound right off the bat. How it would sound if you just stuck that compressor on your drums. How it would sound if it was just loaded up with stock settings. I actually want to take a listen to the FG Grey in comparison to the FG Dynamics. I feel like we're favouring the FG Dynamics a little bit, but they're both SSL things. I, I want to see how they fare against each other. Uh, this is FG Grey. 
decent bottom end. I think, without listening, I think the FG Dynamics is going to kill a bit more of that bottom end. Yeah, it did. Great. That's actually great. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I've got the attack button on fast. Idiot. Right, let's go for it again. I'm only human. Dynamics. Yeah, it's still tighter. Still getting rid of that low a little bit more. Back to dynamics. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know which is the punchiest. Let's go for stress versus FG Grey. Uh, just on the 3 to 4 dB version because I kind of said that the stress was a bit punchier. I had a bit more bottom end and that's the same comparison I've made here. So FG Grey was just about as punchy but a bit more bottom end and that was the same as what stress was doing. So let's go for it. Stress coming in. Wow, that's very similar. Whoa. Wow, they could easily be the same compressor. To my ear, anyway, they sound very, very similar. Let's go for the uh, the more aggressive one. So where are we? FG Stress, let's solo that one. And then we're gonna compare that to FG Grey. And this is on the more, more aggressive setting, like nine to 10 dB of gain reduction. Stress first. Then FG Grey. Still pretty similar. FG Grey maybe needs a little more gain. Back to stress. Punchier. That's interesting. I kind of feel like going from FG Grey to FG Stress. When you hear the kick, it loses a little bit of the slap. So let's take a listen to FG Grey, and then as I switch to FG Stress, there's a little more attack, a little bit more slap on the kick. And then when I go back to FG Grey, it's a little bit more knocky. It's a, the slap kind of goes away a little bit. So FG Grey first, then going to Stress will be a little more top, and then going back to Grey will be a little duller. So a bit more. This is gonna dull down. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little brighter. That's interesting. So with FG Stress, oh my God, there's so many different things you can do with it. It's crazy. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. There's just, just so much there that you could do. This is just right out the bat. This is just right off the bat. Sorry, this is just exactly what it sounds like when you drag it in from the left-hand side, bang on, just starts compressing. I'm aware that we've not really looked at this monster yet. And... Monster to me is, well, it, it's not just to me. It is a one-trick pony, and it is kind of just something that does one thing, and it does it pretty well. Um, I tend to use it for just that one thing. I'm not going to use it for anything other than, like, a drum parallel smash kind of thing. Um, but let's just, you know, in, in the interest of being kind of complete, let's take a listen to this. Um, let's listen to it in comparison to the FG... The 1176, like the black face, just because that's what it's kind of meant to emulate. I know that it's not an all buttons in on the 1176, but what the hell, let's try it. This is the only one that's very, very definitely not four to one ratio because you, you can't do a ratio on it. It's just either completely annihilated or, or not. So let's take a listen. It's fairly grabby. It's not too crazy. On the black face, here it comes. All right, that's, that's smash here. Although what I would say is I'm maybe not quite touching that 4 dB uh, gain reduction point there. Let's bring that up. It's a little shy, isn't it? Come on, compress for me. There we go. Let's go 1176 again. Yeah, 
Okay, that's interesting. It feels like the 1176 is actually a bit smashier. It feels like it's actually kind of annihilating it a little bit more. Back to the monster. Uh, attack. I never know. On this, is this, so on the 1176, it's got that like backward attack. So far round to the left would be the slowest attack and round to the right is is the, the fastest. I don't know if this one's emulating that as well, but I don't want to touch any buttons. Ignore me. Forget I said that. We're not going to worry about that too much. This FG Red though is a great sounding compressor. It's so it's so open sounding, like it doesn't actually destroy anything too much. If you listen to this compared to the um, FG Grey, they're both in that Virtual Bus Compressor bundle. Neither of them are anything like FGMU, um, but this one, it just grabs hold of things a little bit less. Take a listen. It's great sounding. Let's go on to the FG Grey. Here it comes. I feel like that's a little louder. Let's give this a little more. Over to FG Red. Okay, it's pretty similar. Wow, okay, they're actually a lot more similar than I thought they were. I noted down that this FG Red was really kind of open sounding, but it sounds pretty similar to that, um, the the uh, the SSL emulation as well, the FG Grey. That's interesting. Let's take a listen to this compared to FG Stress. Stress coming up. Yeah, maybe I'm not just giving it enough. Maybe we need to compress even more to actually kind of get that through, that sort of openness. Let's take a listen on the 9 to 10 dB. Now, you're probably not going to use this at 9 to 10 dB as a mastering compressor, but, you know, whatever. Let's go to grey. Yeah, smashing it much more. Back to red. Let's go to stress. Yeah, it's more open than stress. Definitely. Back to stress. 401. Oh, killing it. 1176 modern. Custom Opto. Oh, annihilating it. FGX2. Okay, FGX2 is an interesting one. So you'll see that I've got FG level turned off. Um, I think I've got everything else turned off. It's a bit of a complex plugin to kind of really evaluate in that way. Um, I've not gone for any of the side chains or anything. You can see I'm smashing this actually. Um, but to me, as I said, it's kind of a, it's a bit vanilla. It's, I'm not using the word vanilla as like a slight on it. I'm not saying that it's bad because it's vanilla. I'm just saying that it's relatively gentle and it's not really imparting too much tone on the actual sound. It's kind of doing what a mastering compressor, like a digital mastering compressor by the book should do. And that's not give it too much, just compress the peaks. But it's a great sounding compressor, like for that very reason, because it's smooth, because it's gentle. What else is smooth and gentle here though? What did we say was smooth and gentle? Um, the FG Red, let's take a listen to these on not too much compression. Now you'll notice when I try and open up FGX2, it takes four years to come on because I'm on a Mac Mini and it doesn't like the GPU in it. So let's just take a listen to this compared to the, um, the FG Red. Just see, they're both kind of relatively smooth and vanilla. Let's see which one's the most vanilla -y. This is FGX2. a bit more open. Yeah, it's got a bit more to it, hasn't it? Let's go for FGX2. Back to FG Red. A little Nokia. FG Grey. A bit more on the bottom end. Cool. So, those mastering compressors are mastering compressors for a reason because like you wouldn't use that FG Dynamics, where is it? You wouldn't use that on a mix bus or a master because it's mad. Like it's, although I don't know, would you use it? Possibly. It's very, very punchy, very, very, very punchy. And I don't know if the rest of the mix would really benefit from that. Like it might be cool on drums, but everything else, like when it gets in with everything else, it's going to be a bit mad. I guess the thing to remember about this though is that when this was kind of in 
desks and that was all the compression they had, then you would use it on everything because it was a compressor and why wouldn't you? But I don't think this was really used on the master bus. Then you had the the kind of the 4K, you know, that bus compressor that we have in the FG Grey. Maybe something for another video. Thanks so much for checking it out, guys. That's my way of going through all the compressors and comparing them as completely as possible, um, going through and really doing an A-B comparison from one to another. I did this same thing with the EQs, which if you're that way inclined, you can check it out at the top and I'll put a description uh, down below as well. I really went into depth in there and worked out exactly what each one was doing on a curve basis. I could have gone into something like Plugin Doctor and like had a look at the harmonic content of each of them, but 14 compressors on its own is a lot to do just by listening. And for some reason, Plugin Doctor annihilates my computer. It won't work on my laptop on an M1. It says it should, but it doesn't. And it doesn't work too nicely on this. It especially wouldn't be able to do anything when I've got screen capture running. So maybe that's something for another day when I work out how to get it going. But for now, compressors in the Slate Digital All Access Bundle. There's a wide range there. There's not really anything you can't do with those, which stands to reason. 14 compressors, come on. You've got to find something. Either way, thanks for checking it out. I'll see you again soon. Take care.